Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. The slim line has a slight polonaise drape which falls into the back into a peacock poof. And the décolleté is outlined by a pleated net flower. You like, huh? Chic, huh? Now, this creation is called In October. Ah, very smart, very much chic. And is a speciality of Madame Suzy. Elegant, n'est-ce pas, hein? Thieves, they have robbed me again. Harry, there must be a leak somewhere. Oh, no, no, I don't think so. Oh, yes, there must be. No, those designs were never out of my sight. And the gowns? You know that I slept in the sewing room from the time we started the cutting until the day of the show. Could it be one of the girls? No, I, I doubt it. They never see the gowns until they put them on. Well, then how was it done? See, dirty, rotten thing. Now I'm going to do something about this. Here. Harry, you come with me. No, no, Thank you very much. Bye. No. There, there. There's not my Here it is. Here. Come on. Let me go. There. Yes, that's the best. Look at this. Oh, you'll never get into that size, honey. Where did you get that? How should I know? I don't trace them. I just sell them. You stole this from me. Are you bastard, Sutton? But cows never steals clothes. They practically give them away. Show her the design. Look at that. Same neckline, same shoulders, and the waistline is mine. You are thieves, all of you. Mr. Barnsley! Mr. Barnsley! Look at that, all of you. This is my design, this is my gown, and they stole it away from me. And now they sell my $250 gown for $29.95. Oh. Oh. What are you doing? Not. And you, Mr. North, you know husbands seldom accompany their wives here. Yeah, but their checks do, don't they? Oh, Mr. certain mom, Mr. North. Uh, now I should tell you that you are among the first to see my new fall line. Oh, what? Georgette? Is there? Dépêchez-vous de client qui nous attend. Georgette? Madame, you will notice that the motif for the fall is black. Very smart, very much chic. Now, this creation is called It Happened One Night in October. <laughs> this is a slipper satin strapless sheet gown with an empire waistline. And the bodice slightly draped into a big bow in the back. And the bow is a speciality of Madame Suzy. No, I don't care for that one. I care for that one. $250. You mean for the whole shop? 
No, dear, just for the dress. Excuse me, I will be back in a few minutes, madame. I wonder what he really sees in you. It couldn't be your charming language. Oh, Why, you're no, 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 Stop it! No, 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 stop it! Girls, now, what is the matter? You lost your mind, you two. Now, get him some clothes, quickly, or I'll have you both thrown out of here. Penny, this, and you. If you can't keep the girls in line, I will get someone who can. This is becoming irksome. Am I to show the gowns, or am I not? All right, all right. Girls, come quickly. Jennifer, why aren't you in the blue lace? I was sent up here to talk to you again. What about? Now, stop giving me the baby stares if you don't know what I'm talking about. Now, look, kid, we're in the same racket together. Now, you're getting a pretty nice cut, and so am I. And we're getting sick of this nonsense. Listen, mister, I'm not in any racket but the model racket. So you're getting your signals crossed. My cut is just enough to keep body and soul together. I gotta admit, you're doing all right with the body. Who writes your material? The big guy downtown, the boss, the man I bring the pictures to, and he doesn't happen to like your attitude. Pictures? So that's how they've been copying Madame Susie's gown. Look, why don't you stop giving me this baby talk? You knew what was in those envelopes. No, I didn't. Until now. Well, then you know now. And stop yapping about more dough. When business gets better, the boss will take care of you. And if you don't do what we want you to do, I'll take care of you myself. Myself, do you get it? Oh, Mr. Linden, I must ask you again to not come into this dressing room, please. You are perfectly right, madame. I just wanted to deliver a message, uh, personally. I can't imagine what's wrong. Maybe we should come back another day. Oh, no, you don't. You got me here, and here I'll stay. Besides, I like the scenery. It'll cost you. It'll cost me anyway. I might as well enjoy it. <laughs> oh, madame. Oh, madame, madame. Uh, please forgive her. Huh? Oh, it was nothing at all. Uh, now uh, we see the gowns? Yes? No? Now we see the gowns? Yes. I'm beginning to wonder if bringing you was a good idea. <laughs> uh, Cynthia, please, please. And where did you see this? This gown is for you. Just for you. Yeah, the medical examiner just left. Yes, it's murder, all right. Uh-huh. Stabbed in the back with a pair of dressmaker's shears. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, looks like I'm going to enjoy this investigation. The body to be investigated is over there, Lieutenant. Yes, yeah, so it is, so it is. And who are you? Jerry North is the name. And I'm his wife. My husband and I were here buying a dress. Yeah, but it looks like you bought a murder instead, huh? You lock all the doors like I told you? Yes, immediately. Right after... That means, then, that the murderer is still in the joint. May I use your phone, please? Of course. Look, who said you could use the phone? I just want to call my office. I'll do all the calling around here, mister. And nobody goes in or out unless I say so, huh? Give me the keys. Okay. Don't take the finger with it. Excuse me. Excuse me. Madam. You. You stay with the victim. Oh, no. No, no. no please don't ask me. I can't look at death. It happens every day. You just have to get used to it, that's all. Well, go ahead. The rest of you, come with me. <laughs> This more and more. And who might you be, sir? Oh, I just happened to stop by. 
Oh, you just happened to stop by, huh? You know this character? Yes. He is, uh, that is, he is a good friend of the girl. He was. I don't like the implication of that remark, Madame Susie. Now, look, mister, I don't care what you like or you don't like. Somebody stuck these shears in a girl's back, and for all I know, you might have done it. So How dare you accuse me? Look, mister, just answer the questions, okay? Okay. My name is Arthur Linden, of Linden and Conway, brokers. I was taking a friendly interest in Miss Martin. He was hanging around here all the time, Lieutenant. When they weren't fighting, they were making up. They had a big fight yesterday. He threatened her. Oh, he did, did he? Anyone else hear him? I did. Mr. Linden wasn't anywhere near Cynthia. Well, hello. Hello. I'm Ronnie Slauson, Cynthia's roommate. I helped her get this job here, and we shared everything together. Clothes and money. And Mr. Linden. Why, you... Well, no, break it up, girls. Don't talk to me like that. I've had just about enough. Why, there's no sympathy, no feeling in any of you. Cynthia you was close to me, a friend. Part of my everyday life. Now she's gone. But what does that mean to you? Or you? Nothing. I understand how you feel. I want to be your friend. What, what shall I do when I go home? I'll see her clothes. And hear her voice. And feel her as she passes through the rooms. Oh, no, I can't face it. You come and stay with us tonight. You mustn't be alone. Oh, but Pam. It'll be the first use we've had of the guest room. Now, I won't take no for an answer, and Jerry and I will go and get your things so you won't even have to go to your apartment. All right. I'll get you the key to the apartment. Lieutenant, there was someone here. Someone who isn't here now. I thought I told you to lock all the doors. He was here before Cynthia was killed. I told him to get out. How do you know he did? How do you know he didn't hang around and knock her off? How do you know you didn't let the killer get away? Oh! Well, I've got a good mind to lock up every one of you as accessories to the fact. That's what I love about buying a dress at Susie's. You meet such interesting people. Shut up. Yes, sir. Well, what have you got to say for yourself, huh? Can two girls be? Hmm, it looks funny. Darling, would you mind telling me what you're looking for? I don't know. It's a good thing you don't know what you're looking for, uh, because when you find something, it's always a surprise. And sometimes it, it leads to defeat. Of course, I, I don't like to disagree with you, but uh, if you really don't know what you're looking for, I suggest... Oh! Oh! Hey, stop! Hey, what's going on here? What have I 
no, no, nothing at all, officer. Nothing. I... Wait a minute. There is something wrong. Yeah, that's what I thought. Why, well, yeah. I thought I heard a couple of shots. So did I. Well, did you, where do you suppose they came from? Well, as long as we're supposing. Maybe they came from this gun. Come on, let's now get out of here. I don't think you understand, Elvis. Well, that's that. Whoever it was, the cops got him. Now, let's get out of here. Not until I've packed a few things first. Better pack a bulletproof vest, too. I don't see why you get so upset over a little shooting. Nobody was hurt. I don't like it. I don't like anything about it. Pooh. Isn't this cute? Oh, Pam, you're the only woman in the world who can get shot at one minute and the next try on hats. Now, come on, before I carry you out bodily. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, isn't it cute? Well, that's the smallest camera I've ever seen. Jerry, that's how they did it. Did what? Stole the designs. What designs? Susie told me that someone was stealing her exclusive styles and she didn't know how it was being done. You mean Cynthia was mixed up with a gang of fashion thieves? I'm sure of it. Find the person to whom she gave the negatives and you find the killer. Okay, but we'll take this camera to McGuire first. Getting me down here in the middle of the night, asking me a lot of foolish questions. You ever see this before? I don't even know what it is. It's a camera. It was found in the dead girl's things. A camera. Can I? That's how they did it. That's how they robbed me. Then that gives you a good motive for murder. Oh, don't be foolish. You do not think I murder. Oh, but I have a bad temper and I've now been look, a thief. Take it easy, will you, lady? First I am robbed, then you insult me. Put you. Yeah? Okay, bring him in. We picked up a guy I'd like you to identify. Well? Wait, that's the man that was in the dressing room before the killing. Okay, Foster. Now, mister, we'll get your story. There ain't no story. Sit down. How well did you know the murdered girl? All I know is she was working for us. Who's us? I don't know. She got the films, I got the negatives, had them developed, turned them over to a guy, and he paid me off. What guy? Where'd you meet him? I don't know. I never knew his name. Met me in a different place every time. That's all I know. I swear it. Why, you dirty, rotten thief! I'll kill you! Oh, wait a minute, lady. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down, both of you. Here, give me that. So you don't know the girl, and you don't know the man who ran the racket, huh? Sure. I know this much about the girl. She was trying to shake us down for more dough. Well, my contact told me to put a scare into her. That's how I happened to be in the dressing room. But he never said anything about murder. Well, after I heard that uh, she'd been bumped off, I knew the cops were gonna close in on her, so I went up to her apartment to see if I could find anything that would tie her in with me. That's all I know about the girl. Are you satisfied? All right. Foster, come in. Mister, I'm gonna lock you up. Give you a chance to think. If you're a slow thinker, you may be in there for years. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Come I know on, nothing. I had nothing to do with this killing. Are you... This could go on forever. I have business to attend to. So have I. Say, you were pretty handy with this letter opener a minute ago. You certainly ought to be able to handle a pair of shears. Well, you're not insinuating that I... Why not? Why, don't be sorry for this. I'll go to the commissioner. I'll go to the mayor. You won't go any place. You know, Ronnie, it's awfully sweet of you to help me alter this old thing. Oh, I love doing it. It's the least I can do for your kindness to me. I couldn't have stood being in that apartment alone. Oh, did I tell you that we found a little camera among Cynthia's things? Camera? Oh, I, I, I didn't know she had any hobbies. Oh, she did. A very profitable one. Cynthia was working with a gang of fashion thieves. It's quite a racket. There are millions in it. I can't believe it. She seemed like such a sweet, innocent girl. What did you two fight about? Oh, that. It was nothing. I've been going out with Arthur Linden for a long time, and she had ideas she could cut me out. You know how girls are. <laughs> oh, I must get some thread for this hem. Here it is. Oh, but it doesn't match. 
Oh, well, we've worked long enough tonight. I'm getting sleepy anyhow, aren't you? Yes, it's been quite a day. Will Mr. North be out late? Uh, yes, he's at a publisher's dinner. I never know what time he'll come in when he's out with the boys. <laughs> well, good night. You know where your room is. Sleep tight. You too, Mrs. North. You call me Pam. Thank you, Pam. Good night. <laughs> this door. Ronnie, you were the one in the fashion racket, not Cynthia. And you killed her. I said open that door, Mrs. North. I found the camera in your hat box. You know that now, don't you? And that's why you're trying to get out of here. You're a very good actress, Ronnie. Your hysteria over Cynthia and your, and your fear of the apartment were very convincing. You don't open that door. There's only one thing left for me to do. Ronnie, put those scissors down. Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie, this is crazy. Ronnie, don't. Ronnie! But I'm glad. That sounds funny, doesn't it? But it's not. It's like standing under the shower after a hot, dirty day. I got tangled into the racket of photographing Madame Susie's originals. I liked originals, too. In dollar bills. I only used Cynthia to deliver the film to the buyer. But then I thought she started to get wise. And I was afraid of her taking the deal away from me. You know the rest. Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy, a John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilm. 
starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSale. This has been a film presentation.